comfort as possible. And now they're doing construction outside. So, I have a problem. I, so, for some time now I've had a need for a more uh, home-based uh, storage solution. Uh, like most people, I have a OneDrive which uh, collects my camera photos and um, office documents in various kinds like Excel or uh, Word. Um, but I don't really have an, any in-house uh, data storage uh, solutions. For the past years I've had uh, many different uh, iterations of this. I've had uh, HP PowerEdge uh, servers. I've had um, many iterations of, of home-built server solution, mostly based out of uh, Windows Server or FreeNAS, uh, which have worked better and, and worse. I've had everything from uh, Core 2 Extremes, you know, Socket 775 solutions that has been chugging on for months, uh, which is in my case is quite a long time. <laughs> And uh, I've had like uh, X79 systems, you know, multi-core systems of every sorts and, uh, and uh, all that kind of stuff. But never anything that's been dedicated for, for you know, long time storage. Most of these have been experimental, fun to play with kind of systems which have eventually been switched out for something else. Someone is sneezing in the walls. So I went out and bought a um, Dell R210 version 2. It's a one unit server, not really intended for storage, but it will, in this case it worked, it will work fine. Um, it's more intended for like a, I guess a cluster unit or some kind of firewall solution, something like that, I guess. Um, but this, it will work just fine. Uh, it's, a, it's quite an old unit, it's from 2011, based on the Intel C202 chipset, co um, uh, codename Cougar Point, I think. Uh, the CPU is an E5-1220, that's one of the more basic configurations for this server. Uh, it was initially paired with a uh, 8 gigs of RAM as well, although uh, this server has been upgraded by a previous owner to 12 gig uh, instead of 16 maybe, which is the next step in the configuration tree. They came with 8, 16, then 32 from Dell, uh, if I'm not mistaken. The CPU, the E5-1220, is a quad-core, non-hyper-threading chip. It's a sandy bridge architecture chip, so it's quite old from 2011 as well. Uh, now, when you build a server, when you build a, like a home multi-purpose machine, you know, you're doing virtual machines, uh, everything from one node, uh, you, you ought to want something with a little more cores and, uh, of course, hyper-threading as well. But since this is going to be a dedicated NAS unit, it's not going to be used for anything else than just pouring and collecting all of my accumulated data. Uh, those four cores will be, will be fine and uh, the RAM, 12 gigs, uh, should, should be nice with 16 but I can upgrade that down the line, 12 will work uh, great initially. So as I said I'll be running TrueNAS Core and uh, I'll be running that off a of flash drive initially. Since this server only has uh, two dedicated hard drive spots uh, I'm gonna use those for my storage drives and uh, just run and run a flash drive internally. This uh, the server has internal USB ports, so you can put two drives in there if you want to, one for redundancy maybe. Um, but down the line, since uh, there is more say expandability, expandability, I'll uh, put in a, uh, an SSD of some sort probably. You can uh, that can be used for um, uh, OS backup, uh, dump files, report files all that various things that you accumulate during that time. Now for hard drives, I, I'm gonna use these. Uh, these are two uh, Western Digital, Western Digital uh, VD Green, or WD Green drives, uh, three terabyte. Now two three terabyte drives might not sound like a lot in a modern NAS solution, but uh, for the last 13 years, I've accumulated around 900 gigabytes of uh, collective data, and I've collected them on, on this. <laughs> this is a IC box. A RAID enclosure has a built-in RAID card and a cooling fan, of course. Um, so I put two drives in here, two one and a half terabyte, uh, which are mirrored, RAID one, if you want to call it that. Um, that's basically this is my vault. This is holding everything from uh, 2000, 2007 and forward. Um, except for that, I also have like uh, two workstations. We have a Mac Mini, and uh, these are holding some various folders with pictures and stuff that. It needs to be collected in one place, but so that would be a good baseline. I'll put the server up, I'll put the drives in, uh, collect all the data, and um, when you know times pass, uh, you lose your mind, you can buy more servers. That's basically what you do. Uh, you can upgrade, you can build a new uh, VM-based one or whatever. So 
this is this is a good start for me. Yes, okay, so this is the server itself. And these are the two three terabyte hard drives I'll be using. You can put these aside for now. This is a quite an easy unit to work on. It doesn't have a lot of hardware and hard drives that you're gonna be uh, swapping around. So to open it, this is already unlocked, but this is the locking mechanism. You just twist it either another way with a screwdriver or something. If you want to lock it, you just press this here and push this back. Now that doesn't work. You press this, you push it back. God damn it. So this is the inside of the server. Uh, the first thing we see is the two dedicated uh, hard drive places. You get the first drive that goes right in here and the second goes right in here. Uh, this didn't come with any uh, mounted drives, of course. Most people don't tend to sell their drives. Uh, it has two SATA power. Of course, you can add the two drives. You have uh, two dedicated uh, SATA cables for the power data management. And uh, the interesting thing is that you can actually put up to five drives in this, so it has uh, five uh, SATA interfaces over here. I'm not sure how you're supposed to go about that since it can't really hold that many drives. It only has the two uh, three and a half, uh, three and a half inch uh, drive uh, mounting base. Uh, I guess you can put some SSDs in here, but really this is the only place they would fit. And when this was released, I don't think that was like a general thing. So. I'm not sure, but it's probably a generic board used for many things. So that's one thing I will probably upgrade in the future is uh, getting an SSD. I can put it right here with some double-sided tape. And you uh, connect it to the OneDrive and you, you just split one of these with a SATA splitter. And um, you can use that for like uh, image, uh, image backup or dump files or uh, report files uh, from the OS. Um, the OS I'm going to use is TrueNAS Core, so that's going to be very useful. Otherwise you can you can locate these two internal uh, USB headers, it's one here and one here. And uh, you can put a USB thumb drive in there, that's what I'll do initially. I'll just uh, install FreeNAS into a flash drive and put it uh, right here. And moving on, we have the three ambient cooling fans. Uh, these uh, provide the, the system cooling, basically, this is uh, all they have. And you have a, another one located over at the power supply. The power supply, by the way, is a uh, Dell Link original, or I think it's Delta Electronics, maybe that makes them. Uh, it's a 250 watt silver, uh, 80 plus silver, so it's a pretty good unit. Now obviously this does not have redundant power, it's only the one power supply. So, except for that, we have the Dell Remote Access Controller over here. Um, so you can access the server from a remote location, access the virus functionality and all that kind of stuff. If we remove this shroud, we find the uh, heatsink for the CPU. Uh, obviously, since this is such a low power uh, CPU, uh, it doesn't require any dedicated fans. So the ambient uh, cooling fans provide the cooling for the CPU, and that's pretty pretty common in in uh, enterprise server builds, um, at, at least at this level. Uh, and here are the RAM sticks. Uh, now, uh, what I suspected was that we had two 4 gig sticks that came with the server initially, and uh, two extra that was added by some previous owner, and this seems to be correct. Uh, we have two 4 gig Dell sticks here, they're Dell branded, but they're Samsung memories. And uh, the one here and one here are actually different. This is a 2 gig Kingston and this is a uh, 2 gig Samsung as well. So uh, hopefully that works well. Uh, the previous owner didn't say anything about this being bad in any way, so that should work just fine. And yeah, there's, there's not a lot more to say about the internals here. Uh, this, is, this is a pretty as I said, entry level uh, node spec server. This wasn't really intended to be used as a storage solution, uh, more like a node or like a cluster or something, or like a firewall or, or that kind of applications. But this will work perfectly for my needs.